Let's talk about Sjogren's syndrome and a really good protocol. If I personally had Sjogren's syndrome, I'm going to show you exactly what I would do. Many times this syndrome, and syndrome is kind of uh, involving multiple areas, is mistaken for dry eyes or dry mouth when in fact it's an autoimmune disease. But the dry mouth can lead to dental decay, chap lips, difficulty swallowing, but it involves a lot of mucous membranes. And you have a lot of mucous membranes through the entire body. And so it can really affect your sinuses, it can affect the gastrointestinal tract. It can also spread to the lungs, the kidneys, and the nervous system. So it's progressive and it's chronic, so it typically gets worse with time. But I'm going to show you what to do to put it in remission. It's very common for people with Sjogren's to also have lupus and or rheumatoid arthritis or other autoimmune diseases. There's uh, pain, there's fatigue involved. There's also a high risk of lymphoma, which is uh, like a tumor in your lymphatic system. Women are nine times more likely to get this than men. And there's even a genetic part, like it was called a polymorphism, which basically is a weakness within your genes that can get turned on with certain environmental triggers. But if you have this gene, it doesn't mean that you're going to get Sjogrim's. It just means that you have a tendency to get it if there's a certain environmental stress factor in play. And that stress factor is usually viral. And I'm talking about Epstein-Barr virus and cytomegalovirus, okay? Now, both of those viruses are latent, which means you get this infection, it goes in remission, and so you don't have this problem anymore, and then it can come out of remission later. Or the same thing with chickenpox, right? You have chickenpox, and then later in life, you end up with this um, shingles, okay? It comes and goes depending on stress. Well, Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus can come out of remission, which is probably triggered by some major stress event. It could be a a loss of a loved one, for example. I see that very common when I was in practice. And then it just alters your immune system to the point where you have an autoimmune disease, which I'm gonna get into in a minute. But the point is that many of these conditions are triggered by uh, various things and viruses are at the top of the list. But what's behind that is usually a stress event. And this is why Sjogren's uh, can sometimes go in remission, right? They just, it just kind of goes away and people don't know why, well, it probably has something to do with the person's stress level. They just suddenly handled their stress and this condition gets much better. As far as the underlying mechanism, right? They studied this. I put a lot of references down below to, if you want more information, but they isolated this very specific problem within your immune system. And I'm not gonna get into detail, but all you need to know is there's two types of T cells involved. You have the T helper cell, 17 involved. That cell is normally um, involved in attacking pathogens, viruses, bacteria, and fungi. But for some reason, that goes out of balance and it loses control and it starts to attack your own tissues. And so they found that we have too much Th17 that's out of balance with another uh, T cell called the T regulatory cell, which is all about self-tolerance and protecting our own tissues from being attacked. In other words, attacked by our own immune system. So it prevents friendly fire. It helps the body differentiate between our own cells and a pathogen. So the perfect storm seems to be this increase of Th17 and this decrease of the T regulatory cell. That part of the immune system gets out of balance and that initiates an autoimmune response. And then we get a lot of inflammation and collateral damage. But they isolated this out of balance with like psoriasis, lupus, Sjogren's. And so the protocol I'm going to talk about really addresses putting this part of the immune system back into balance. Now, Personally, from looking at this data, there's a lot of evidence to show that this might also be initiated in your gut because in the mucous membrane of the lining of your colon, you have these Th17 cells as well as the Treg cells. And so you have this GI system with a massive, massive surface area. If you were to stretch out your intestinal tract, which is basically an internal protective barrier to the inside of your body, if you took the surface area of that and you stretch it out, it would be the size of a tennis court, which is constantly being exposed to a multitude of viruses, bacteria, uh, certain junk foods, things that create inflammation. So 
there's a lot going on. If you have any autoimmune disease or any condition that involves inflammation, boy, you better get your diet right to make sure that nothing you're eating creates inflammation in your gut. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. I'm not going to get into the diet for this. I'm going to jump right into the protocol. So the protocol involves natural remedies backed up by some pretty hardcore studies that do a couple things. One is put this uh, TH17 slash Treg ratio back in balance. And so the first remedy is called sweet wormwood. Okay, there's an active ingredient in there that's highly researched that is really good for your immune system and especially this condition. It's called artemisinin. And it also has another function of inhibiting viruses, specifically the Epstein-Barr virus and the cytomegalovirus. So it'll help you in both areas. Now, as far as the uh, dosage on all the things I'm going to talk about, I would just follow what is on the back of the label. The next thing I'm going to recommend is, this is more of a food, broccoli sprouts. You could get sulforaphane as a supplement, um, but it's preferable to get broccoli sprouts and just to put them on your salad, you know, just a little bit each day. But the sulforaphane in broccoli sprouts also helps to balance your T cells as well as reduce the cytokines or the inflammatory cascade that occurs after this imbalance. Sulforaphane is also very uh, antiviral. It helps you with oxidative stress. And this next remedy is, you know, not a supplement, it's a food and it's sauerkraut. And I know you're probably wondering, what would sauerkraut do for an autoimmune disorder, right? Well, another piece of fascinating data is that your gut microbes regulate the T helper 17 cells as well as the T regulatory cells to prevent viruses from creating problems, also from invading that lining in your colon. So I would recommend just a little bit of sauerkraut in your diet every single day as a probiotic, which will also give you the vitamin C and it'll also give you a good fiber to help feed the microbes. Now you can also do a probiotic, but sauerkraut is uh, one of the best probiotics that you can consume. Nearly all of the Sjogren's syndrome cases have dysbiosis. They have problems within their gut. And that might be actually one of the biggest factors in this perfect storm of developing an autoimmune disease. And so if you can focus on getting this diverse population, okay, in your gut, um, that right there might put this thing right back in remission. There's two other potent vitamins that can help put these T cells back in the balance. One is vitamin D and the other one is vitamin A. And I'm not talking about beta carotene, I'm talking about retinol. Both have potent effects of balancing out to make sure you have the right ratios of your T cells. I would recommend 30,000 IUs of vitamin D every single day which by the way, will also drop your inflammation. And as far as the vitamin A goes, I'm gonna recommend you get that from cod liver oil. And the cool thing about cod liver oil is not only does it have DHA and EPA, which is needed to help counter the dryness in your eyes and your mouth, but cod liver also has vitamin A and vitamin D. And so it's one of the best oils for this condition because it has so many factors that contribute to lessening the side effects from this problem. So the cod liver oil, uh, specifically the DHA and the EPA, is going to help also stimulate the glands to produce tears in your eyes. And I'm gonna also recommend, uh, very importantly, this other oil. It's black seed oil. It'll give you a type of fat called GLA, which in combination with that cod liver oil will help stimulate the tear ducts to produce more tears. Now, before you go to sleep at night, I would recommend you put coconut oil in your mouth, okay? Just to help with the dryness when you're sleeping. And you can even take on a Q-chip, put some in each nostril of your nose to help with dryness if needed, especially if you have cracking. And the last remedy is called cordyceps mushroom. That can target the malfunctioning salivary gland. And so it's gonna increase the production of saliva as well as address part of the immune system that's out of balance. So go ahead and apply this information and then come back to this video and please comment in the comment section your results.
Now, the next most important video is my video on the relationship between vitamin D and what it can do for autoimmune diseases in general. So check that out. I put it up right here.